You have learned the important processes of how to make silver solder flow. What is just as important is how to make silver solder not flow. Many students have difficulty soldering multiple solder joints in a small area. The prior solder joints keep remelting and your projects are falling apart. This is a problem for all jewelers. In this video, I'm going to show you four methods to help you avoid this problem of unexpected remelting solder. I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome to my studio. The first method is plan your soldering steps. You have five different grades of solder that melt at different temperatures. Typically, jewelers use three grades, hard, medium, and easy. These three grades give you a good range of temperatures to work within. Plan your project solder joints around these grades. Start your project using hard. The next solder joints use medium, then finish up with easy. This method is the simplest and most direct way of controlling remelting solder. Another way to use different grades of solder in your design plan is to plan to use sectional soldering. Soldering sections or modules together with a high melting grade of solder first, then solder the sections together with a lower melting grade. This will prevent the prior solder joints from remelting. The second method is direction of torch flame. The direction you point your torch can make or break your soldering job. When you point the torch straight down toward your project, the heat is dispersed in all directions. This can give you less control and increases the chances of a nearby prior solder joint remelting. If you simply tilt the torch, the heat will move in one direction. This gives you control to put the heat only where you need it. Remember, the heat doesn't stop at the end of the torch tip, it continues forward. Make sure you are not heating an area of your project that you don't want heated or melted. The third method is heat sinks and shields. The tools you use to set up your soldering project can both help and hurt you. The most common tool used is the cross lock tweezer. They work great for holding the pieces to be soldered, but they can steal much needed heat to melt the solder. Try to keep the cross locks as far away as possible from the joint being soldered. That being said, why not use this problem to your advantage? If you don't want a prior solder joint to remelt, use a cross lock on it. It will sink the heat away and help prevent the joint from remelting. A heat shield does exactly what its name implies. It shields your prior solder joints from the torch. In some cases, you will not be able to direct your torch away from an area of your project. Put a piece of copper between the torch flame and the protected area. You can also use a soldering block, pumice stones, sheet steel, or commercial heat shield products. The fourth method to prevent remelting solder is anti-flow materials. Here are a few materials that will help prevent solder from reflowing. Correction fluid, masking muds, there are several commercial muds that are available, watercolor paints with yellow ochre in them, yellow ochre powder and red rouge compound powder. Both have iron oxide in them and I feel that these two are the best anti-flow materials. They are inexpensive, mix well with water, stay where put, and clean up easily. After soldering with the anti-flows, I like to quench in water, then clean with a brush and water to remove any residues before I put them into the pickle. The powders will not hurt the pickle, but cleaning first keeps your pickle cleaner longer. Yellow ochre and rouge powders are available with trade names, so check the ingredients before you buy. I'd like to demonstrate how effective yellow ochre can work as an anti-flow material. 
let's flow some solder in the untextured area and protect the textured area. I'll mix some yellow ochre with water and paint the textured area. We need to flux where we want the solder to flow, add solder, and melt the solder. You can see the solder will not flow onto the protected texture. Notice the red color after quenching in water. This is the iron oxide in the yellow ochre. It can be washed off with a brush and soap and water. Here is the silver after pickling. Perfect control of the solder flow. In this example, I'd like to show you how solder joints near each other can be protected from remelting. I've set this piece up with cross lock tweezers and suspended it in the air so you can see when the solder melts. I would normally place the piece on the soldering block so the torch heat will stay around the joint being soldered. When you suspend your pieces in the air, a good percentage of the torch heat is bypassing the silver and will take longer to heat up to the melting temperature. There's the solder melting and the closest solder joint is protected. I'll heat the piece more until the second solder joint melts. And again, the other solder joints are protected. Having solder joints protected with yellow ochre and other anti-flow materials does not mean they will never melt. They are protected for a limited time. This extra time is what we can use to make a successful solder job. By using these four methods of making solder not flow, you will buy extra time for you to solder multiple solder joints in a small area. Your soldering skills will become more controlled, helping you to become a successful jeweler. Many of you have asked if I have a website. I'd like to invite you to visit my new website, greggreenwoodjewelry.com. There is a link in my channel's homepage along with my email address if you have more detailed comments. Thank you for watching and for all of your support. I really appreciate it. I'm Greg Greenwood. See you next time.